It's you, baby. <laughs> uh, he indifferent. He dang dash ignorant. But I can be your mistress. He cocky. He indignant. He different. He dang dash ignorant. But I refuse to be your mistress. I refuse to live in de-stress. Not even for a deeper dress. Little baby come. He indifferent. He dang dash ignorant. Catch you with a bro for all this. Hi, guys. Hi. Mistresses are mystery. And I'm a full fledged now. Ladies, thriller. Mike Jackson type. Thriller. Page turn up. And here's a clue of babies in the library with a burn up. Sales came to me with a four. Undercover. This kitty fight back. She with fight a back. She fuck back. She prefer a raw with no Jimmy hat. Jeff, don't come me. And little nigga, you can't hit that. My daddy is so ignorant. He Kanye West persistent. When I'm mad, it's 200 roses and couture closes. Attack <laughs> on my wrist. Yo, bitch, I got your dipping dots. But they this pussy go crazy. It'll run your nigga bracy. Dry that nigga crazy. But fuck, love, pay me. And pay me cause I'm baby. You gon' pay me cause I'm baby. Pay me cause I'm baby. Pay me cause I'm baby. I'm baby nigga. I'm baby young, baby young, baby nigga. I'm a rough writer. I write that nigga rough, then I dig off in his guts till he say enough is enough. Baby, you that bitch. What's your cash up? Cause baby, you that bitch. What's your cash up? Cocky, he indignant, he dame dash different. He Kevin Gates persistent. The type to say you fuck with me, you mine. Well, daddy, listen here. I'm not the bitch to stand in. <laughs> I don't stand in line. You fuck with me, you mine. I don't stand in line. You fuck with me, you mine. But I guess you have a pickle. This hell can't. What are you thinking? Don't don't, don't make me get my gun. Don't. I I have to tell you something, I'm nervous about it. Everything okay? Just don't freak out, because it's actually really beautiful. I'm gonna freak out if you don't tell me what it is. What is it? Remember that time when you tried to pull out and I leg-locked you? Yeah. You sneezed inside of me. I'm pregnant. What? Oh, fuck. So you guys can watch about my um, first so win in the last like back ten years. Like party. Uh, I used to have my hair cut in a V and when I was cut in a V because your hair this natural grows in a V. My hair was money, always like I spent it. Like, I scream. Like, uh, I scream. My goal was to get a back to butt I see that new Anyways, tech. I like I cut it into like an all even style. And ever since then, I have just been experiencing a whole bunch of breakage and yada yada yada. And so now I gotta tie it down because I gotta get past that like choppy stage in my haircut journey uh, because I needed to grow back out naturally into a V. So I can go get it cut again. My sister does hair. Uh, she's actually studying law right now. She's going to be barred here pretty soon. But uh, at the end of the day, like I can't fix my hair all the time. So the best way to get the look that I want, the length that I want. She was not getting me a nice little phone in. And so, I say hey, all that to say, when you first have a phone in and you in the summertime, God bless the, God bless me. Okay, because I didn't recognize monsoon season We're going to have me in a, in a bit of a blending journey, Lord. Like, look at that. Snarky black girl. And so, it still looks good to me. I still like it like this, but I'm just like, girl, I want this hair blend like it's supposed to. I'm still going to rock it, but uh, so what? I 
licked it. Yes, Lord. I, I spit on it. Ain't God good. Bust it on like I'm a gynecologist. Like Karen subscribe. My eye on you like I'm a the so What's up, you guys? It's your girl, Baby, back again. And this is another episode of Pop Culture News. So please sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. <laughs> What's up, you guys? It's your girl, baby, back again. And I know y'all thought this was never coming back and you missed it so much. <laughs> but, of course, today it is Pop Culture News Day. It's 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, so thank y'all so much for joining. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, this particular cast is, or broadcast, is dedicated to all of my bad B-words, my fat B-words, my sad B-words, my tall ones, my short ones, and my sick B-words. Yo, all my bitch B-words. Anyways, uh, so welcome to Pop Culture News Live on Instagram. I am doing this every single day at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, just like I was at one point before. Um, and so today's episode is sponsored by Snarky Black Girl Productions and Snarky Black Girl TV. And of course, stream my new mixtape, which is called Weddings Off. Uh, the official uh, actual album date is December the 4th, 2023. So hopefully you guys will, of course, purchase my album and or stream it. Um, but that's, of course, not exactly what pop culture news is all about just yet. Um, but anyways, let me go ahead and jump into it because honestly, pop culture news is being presented from a bed, as y'all can see, because your girl is tired. I've been like working, working, working nonstop. And so, you know, when is enough enough? Clearly, it's never enough, but it is enough. Like, I know that I know that um, a lot of you guys out there work very hard. I work very hard. And when you do put in that work, you know, sometimes you do have to take a little bit of, of a break. So this technically is a bit of my break time, but I did want to bring y'all this show. Um because y'all know on friday i went to go see the barbie movie if y'all follow me on uh not twitter but my uh youtube channel then you guys know that i posted a quick review of barbie uh the barbie movie but i wanted to go ahead and talk to you guys about that a little bit more today because i saw it and i wanted to like see if you guys had seen it and what you thought about it obviously um, so I saw the Barbie movie and it started out, you know, all is well or whatever. It was a very cute movie, very cute opening. Um, you know, it started out with like a dance montages and all that uh, very cutesy stuff. And it quickly took a turn for the worse when uh, Margot Robbie's Barbie began to have these like... Um, she began to have these like invasive thoughts or these intrusive thoughts about death. And so uh, she went to go see Weird Barbie, who's played by uh, Anna de Armas, who is, uh, she plays a really, really funny role on uh, SNL, Saturday Night Live. She always uh, has these really weird skits where she's been abducted by these aliens. And you've just got to watch one of them. Like, I, I, I will do it no justice if I, if I try to, like, talk to you guys about how it goes, but whatever. Anyways, um... And so she, the weird Barbie tells her to go back to the real world and find her girl who's playing with her. So it turns into this entire, like, uh, you know, obviously movie montage about Barbie trying to figure out her life's purpose. Uh, and so anyways, the, the movie really, like, hits home on patriarchy and how it is that we can kind of, like, you know, come out of a patriarchal society, if you will, uh, and it really is very uh, serious. Like, I didn't necessarily think that the Barbie movie would be that serious, uh, but it went there, girl. And so, um, yes, if you guys saw the movie, then I'm sure you guys uh, have your own take on it. But here's mine. I am a misandrist by heart. Y'all know that already if you follow me on Twitter. Uh, so I don't necessarily uh, like men all that much, although I love them. Um, and even that, even the patriarchal themes of Barbie they were very heavy even for me I thought I was going to go in there and be super cutesy wearing my Barbie outfits and really just like showing up to be like that girl and it was I'm still that girl I still showed up but it was very very uh dark in some places I ended up like having a lump in my throat throughout like the the first 15 minutes of the movie, I had a lump in my throat and it didn't go away until I got home and I, I shed some tears. So the Barbie movie will make you cry. It will definitely make you cry. It will make you think. And I really, I liked it. I will say I liked it, but I did find some of the themes to be a lot heavier than what I was really ready for. Um, 
yes so i want you guys to watch it for yourselves i'm trying to kind of skim over some of the 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 deeper themes the more of the deeper subplots or whatever so that y'all don't consider this a spoiler um but but i mean it got it, it really kind of went there when it came down to like uh barbie's image and the way that it uh, kind of has led women astray over the years it really kind of brought back to light for me a lot of the barbies that i used to grow up with you know skipper doll the pregnant barbie i do remember the pregnant barbie that had the baby that dropped out we actually had that pregnant barbie dr barbie veterinarian barbie so we had a lot of those barbies and it was just really um kind of nostalgic to watch but then again again there were these very dark deep patriarchal themes of oppression and women breaking free so if that's your bag go ahead and watch the movie i still even if that's not your bag i really feel like you should still watch the movie because even though i feel like it was kind of um heavier than what i was really ready for y'all might just be that might be right up y'all's alley so i mean it was a really good movie though and so yes like Again, I'm bring, I'm presenting this from the bed. I know I am just trying to bring the show to y'all and I'm not trying to like rush this, but girl, let's get through this real quick because I really am very tired. Um, so if you guys saw my previous video from Pop Culture, Culture, Pop Culture News on Friday, the pre-recorded version, then you guys do did pull up, you guys did see where I uh, talked about Ice Spice and Nicki Minaj's song for Barbie World. And uh, speaking of patriarchy, uh, it was very interesting to me that the movie Barbie is all about how men are patriarchal uh, tyrants and um, in the actual Barbie movie, that was the theme of it. But as far as like Ice Spice and Nicki Minaj is concerned, a lot of the male misogynistic, like kind of older hip hop heads uh, that have the podcast, you know, uh, Old Man Ebro and those sorts, although, I mean, nothing against them, but they did uh, kind of like, come for Ice Spice a bit after she kind of rose to fame. A lot of them were saying, you know, could she really handle fame and yada, yada, yada. And so again, if I, I find it very interesting that she is featured on the soundtrack. Her song is on there. It's dope. It fits in exactly with the movie. Uh, but I found it really interesting that you know, the podcast all talks about Ice Spice in the sense that she's kind of disposable and, you know, and the movie had that whole subplot to it. So it made me wonder as I was watching it, whether or not that was like a part of the marketing ploy of the movie, or if men really are that, um, I don't want to call them dense. Cause I think that that is a bit too harsh of a character, you know, a characteristic for, for them. But honestly, really like some black men are a little dense. I ain't just trying to call it black men, but honestly, um, yeah. So it made me kind of think about that as well. So watch the movie anyway, once again, go back and like maybe Google some of the Ice Spice reviews from like The Breakfast Club and uh, again, Old Man Ebro and see what they were saying. Because really it was kind of like, as I was watching the movie, I was like, oh, this is a bit, um, this is almost like a foreshadowing of, I mean, their conversations were a foreshadowing of the actual Barbie movie. You know, men, when will men stop trying to insert themselves into women's business? When will men stop trying to, you know, um, stop trying to place a woman in such a small box that says, oh, Ice Spice is uh, not a confident rapper because she is, I don't know, young and pretty and blah, blah, blah. When will men be, you know, when will men just be men and stay in men's lanes? And when will women just be able just to, you know, be women, watch Barbie movies, look cute and hang out with their girls? So whatever, I'm off the Barbie movie now. So anyways, let's just go ahead and move forward. But I will say this, one thing that the Barbie movie did make me think about was a bunch of the pop culture news readings that I did on celebrities. Y'all know uh, in 2021, I did a whole series on celebrity psychic readings. Of course, celebrity psychic readings is coming back. Y'all keep an eye out for it. But uh, it made me think about the celebrity psychic readings that I did do over the course of the last like two years. And, uh, and a lot of the readings I did, I saw a lot of the... Uh, high level female hip hop girlies that are running the game. Um, all of those girlies, I saw them kind of like having breakups. I saw them leaving their significant others and branching out into singledom. And so 
it made me when I watched the Barbie movie, it made me wonder if there's going to be a mass female single single the movie uh, movement coming into the overall collective. Uh, as I was watching the, the movie, I could feel it. I really saw it. I really felt it. I, but I felt it two years ago, too. And it made me wonder if the world overall or pop culture overall is moving uh, out of the whole Sonny and Cher, out of the whole duos in the in the duets, if it's moving into more of the single artists, um, female power, just all of that. But I will also say this, there's nothing wrong with a woman having a significant other and also at the same time still being powerful. You know, women can still be powerful and at the same time have a mate that they're also running, uh, you know, side by side with. So there's that part. However, the movie did really make me think whether or not there's going to be like some type of mass. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to call it like a mass exodus because that's a little bit too strong. But truly, like what is really going to happen uh, going forward with the hip hop and with pop in general and with all of our um, big duos? Like, uh, you know, there's Rihanna and ASAP. There's uh, B and J. Y'all know I did the whole pop culture news a celebrity psychic reading two years ago where I predicted that a lot of them would break up. And I wonder if it's really going to be a true breakup or if these women are just going to uh, launch back into their solo careers with no real emphasis on the fact that I'm married, I'm this and I'm that because they're secure in their relationships and they don't need no man per se. But we'll see how it goes. You know, I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to go too deep off into it. Um, but anyway, so let me go ahead and move on because again, I am really trying to get it out of here. I'm very tired. Uh, but it, at the end of the day also, uh, uh, when I was watching the Barbie movie, one of the things that I really, really also began to wonder about for a lot of us out here that are really trying to be great and that are really trying to live our dreams, it made me wonder how can you really live your wildest dreams while at the same time still being authentic to you and making income. You guys know already, a lot of you guys, I work with y'all. A lot of y'all, I add, I ended up, you know, uh, making music with y'all. A lot of y'all have known me in a very conventional setting and didn't necessarily know that I had albums in me and I had bigger dreams than just, hello, how can I help you? What's your account number? And so how is it that you can transition from being a very conventional person, living a very conventional life? How can you transition from that and into living out your wildest dreams? Because honestly, it really is possible. You can have the job you want. You can build the brand that you want. You can be the person that you want. But what is the first step in doing that? And so I will tell you all this. One of the first steps for me in doing that was following God. Uh, it was really, really pouring myself back into the Bible, following the, the Ten Commandments. One of the first things that I really, truly and honestly did when I first started, like, really trying to be great in this aspect and in this uh, arena was I began to just simply turn through the pages of the Bible, reading Exodus, reading Genesis, and watching how a lot of those prolific leaders in the Bible began. Joseph, he began in prison. He, and again, for some of y'all, work is prison. But Joseph began in prison. He began following God's advice. And he had a trust and a faith in the Lord. And what the Lord told him that was unshakable and unbreakable. And so one of the things that I really uh, ended up doing when I was younger, too, was that I had a lot of, uh, I had a lot of different intuitive downloads from the Lord that said I'd live my life a certain type of way. And even when it seemed most impossible, I still held on to that because I knew that if I really, really, really just believed it, and no matter what, I believed that it would happen, I believed that I could get to the place where I could potentially really, truly, and honestly live that life that I wanted. And it slowly but surely began to become, a, you know, come into fruition. I mean, yeah, like I first started singing when I was like three or four years old. So this has been a lifelong movement. But some of y'all have lifelong dreams. Some of y'all want to be novelists. And some of y'all have a, a brand inside of you that you want to bring out to the main source, or, you know, to be your main source of income. But where do you start? And I will tell you, the first place that you start is by mental discipline. And mental discipline comes through uh, really trusting in the Lord. And when you trust in the Lord, that means you simply just trust in yourself. You trust in what you get. Uh, but also, again, read your Bible, baby, because it will help you to get to where you want to be. So, because even in the in the Bible, in the book of, uh, I want to say it's uh, Mark, 
maybe it's John, I think it's Mark chapter 10, uh, verse 35, where Jesus talks about how even he, even he came to the world and his brand was not to be served. He didn't come there to be a, a king to get served by the people. He came as a servant of us to put his life on the line for us so that we could learn the way. Jesus Christ was like our very first influencer. And if you follow the influence of Jesus, then there really is nothing that you can do wrong when it comes down to living your best life. Even if things that you say are technically wrong, if God told you to do it, then there's no wrong in it because there really is no wrong and there is no right. All there is is truly like relying on yourself and putting yourself out there. And even going, and I'm going to double down on this customer service idea because God came to serve us. So you are a servant of the Lord. And as a servant of the Lord, your brand is to give good customer service, even to the people that don't deserve it. And so... I tell you what, like there's been times in my life where I've had like supervisors and I've had people that have just tried to really make my life a bit more difficult because I believe that they thought that, you know, because I was pretty and nice and blah, blah, blah. I believe that they thought that everyone was nice to me or they thought that I had a certain level of privilege. And so they use that as an anchor to try to like beat me down in a certain type of way. And the more they did it, the nicer I was to the point where a lot of them either became like my biggest fans or they ended up just moving out of my way because they began to realize that look your your efforts are in vain and now you just look like a hater and so what do you what do you do when you look like a hater you either change your wicked ways or you you know you shape up and you ship out and so either these people are going to come off of your path, the ones that are trying to stop you, or you're going to help to bring other people to the Lord. And, you know, even if just bringing them to the Lord means that they are your biggest fans, they are supportive of you. They are, you know, they are people that are um, definitely believing in you going forward. Then that is still bringing people to God, if you will. And so, yes, you know, your brand should be to exalt goodness, love, and joy at all times. Even if you're a Buddhist and you're doing it for Buddha, do it for Buddha. But I tell you what, if you really love God, the, the God that I serve, the God of Israel, if you will, if you really trust in the Lord, you can make any dream that you want to be a possibility. There's, there's just, it's just honestly the truth. I mean, I did it a lot of these women out here do it Beyonce did it okay you can do it too don't doubt yourself find your own voice and then rock with it like even me I had to find my own voice and I have the worst stage fright the world has ever seen okay and pop culture news came to y'all today anyway and everything told me not to do this right now because I didn't really feel like it I'm, I'm bringing y'all pop culture news from my bed in a sports bra with a little bit of rouge on because I got to be sexy at all times okay but at the same time I was still like hella tired like Everything told me not to do this because I have stage fright. And at the end of the day, who's to say that y'all are really going to rock with what I got to say? People are going to be critical. People are going to say, you know, negative things. And people are going to uh, criticize your work and my work. But at the same time, even if they are criticizing it, even if they are, they still watching what you're doing. They're still helping you to help God out to bring the world into peace and tranquility at the end of the day. So... I really, really want you guys to believe in yourselves so that you can make your dreams a reality. Uh, and of course, I don't have any tarot cards in here, but I am going to do a reading for you guys later on this week about what it is that spirit wants you guys to know when it comes down to actually like living your best lives unapologetically happy. Because I promise you, I can tell it, I can feel it, I smell it, I seize it, I dream about it. I know that the collective is going through a massive massive collective awakening on what it means to really truly and honestly be free you can operate an entire business from the palm of your hand if you really wanted to i was paying my rent just by being on my phone all day and it was easy it was it was nice i was able to quit my job or really i got fired okay i really did get fired but I got fired, but it didn't matter because I had money coming in and the money that was coming in, I could, I could, I could, I got it looking just like this. I got it from vacation in Mexico. Okay. I was doing readings in Mexico. I was doing it for wherever I wanted to be at and you can too, but y'all really do just have to believe in yourselves. So I know that was a bit of a digression from actual pop culture news, but in the vein of pop culture news, I'm going to end the show on this. 
okay what is going on with your girl lana del rey now i'm gonna say it two ways because i'm not saying what's going on with her in a negative way but i i am curious about whether or not she's doing album promo by working in the waffle house or if she really is like if she's really like um needing the the cash flow and that's no tea no shade because girl my royalties are not built up enough in order to be able to like really truly and honestly live on them very um i don't know to live on them a hundred percent but really i am curious about whether or not she is doing this as album promo if she needed the extra money if she has a role coming up i'm curious and it made me wonder again and and it it, it, not even that it made me wonder but it made me want to bring that to y'all because i mean when i worked at when I worked at the jobs I worked at, I've worked with plenty of musicians that have music on the radio that had that, and they still needed a job in order to make ends meet. So do it where you at. Lana Del Rey is making music and cutting albums. She's a, a Grammy nominee working at the Waffle House, serving other people. And at the same time, look at that. She's on my lips. You know, now y'all are hearing about her. And so listen, all publicity is good publicity. And at the end of the day, you got to start somewhere, whether you're at the Waffle House serving people up their pancakes and syrup, or whether or not you sitting up at behind a, a somebody's desk. Again, how can I help you? What's your account number? Start somewhere. Your dreams are tangible and you can have them. With that being said, I'm going to end this show uh stream my music y'all know the songs okay this is my favorite song i ever wrote and it goes a little something like this he so phony so i only call him when i'm horny he only answers when he want me he always answers for me what the fuck do you mean but i'm ready for the real thing and he don't want nothing i guess i'm just blowing off steam it's either my weight or the high weight. Sucker niggas go away while rich niggas gravitate. The gravity of this depravity is sending me. I need a reprieve, maybe some therapy. How about some chemistry? I want to be a better me, most definitely. So stream that song. It's called Lonely. I wrote that three years ago and it just barely came out into the Twitterverse, into my album disc- discography just this year be patient believe in yourself and anything that you want to have happen will happen peace and love